Welcome to EWTN News live coverage of Pope Francis in Cuba. I'm Raymond Arroyo. In a few moments, we will bring you Vespers with Pope Francis and the clergy and seminarians of Cuba from Havana Cathedral. The Pope has just arrived. We'll bring you that first video. Some children are greeting him outdoors. I am joined on set, as always, by Robert Royal, editor-in-chief of thecatholicthing.org, Father Gerald Murray, the Archdiocese of New York, and Father Roberto Cid, director of Radio Paz. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to papalvisit at EWTN.com, or you can tweet me at Raymond Arroyo. Now, this is officially billed as a Vesper service with the seminarians and the religious. Uh, the Pope is now meeting with a, a lady in a wheelchair. Um, it, is, it is suggested that the Pope may be meeting with some in the dissident community here, some who were arrested the other day. We'll see if that comes to pass. That's just now a media rumor, I would, I would say. Some reporters have sent me this, uh, some in Cuba and I'm now seeing it pop up in other places, so this could come to pass. This is the exterior of the Havana Cathedral, beautiful cathedral. And the Pope is making his way inside. We'll let you hear some of the, um, the singing there. A little girl is singing in the uh, portico here as the Pope enters. Uh, Dario de Cuba says dissidents Martha Beatriz Roque and Miriam Leva will greet the Pope at the cathedral. We've kind of lost the Pope here from the camera angle, so we don't know quite who he's meeting with. But um, so this, perhaps, would have, this would have to be organized by the church itself right. and, and perhaps insisted on. Right. And maybe that's what's happening here at the back of the church um, as the Pope enters. Perhaps these are members of the dissident community, but that is at least the story. And it is a group of lay people, it seems, in the back of the church there as the Pope enters. And this is a meeting uh, with the religious and, and clergy of Havana and all of Cuba, meeting at the Havana Cathedral. Part of EWTN's live coverage. Pope is greeting several um, lay people in the back of the church as he makes his way into the Havana Cathedral. And he's really taking his time there, taking pictures and greeting these folks individually, and they're all applauding for him. Perhaps that was the meeting with dissidents? Could be. We don't know who exactly he was talking I, I, to. I have to say this. Um, if, it is interesting that we only saw the backs of those people. We could not see their faces. You saw the Pope, but you couldn't see them, really. Maybe that was by design. The, the girl who was playing for the Pope, playing violin for him, just ran up and gave him a hug. And uh, the Pope making his way now out of the uh, 
vestibule of the church here into the into the main church. And now he's coming back outside. Maybe. Is he going across to meet with the people, It maybe? looks like it, yes, that he's going to... Ah, oh, he just went into the street to bless the people. He, he came out because there were mobs, mm -hmm. crowds of oh, Cubans. Wait, he's getting back on the Pope, in the Pope mobile. Pope is back in the Pope mobile. In front of, maybe that wasn't the Havana mm -hmm. Cathedral. No, I believe it was. Well, the Vesper service is very abbreviated if it was. It might be another church. It That's... could be another church. It looked like a pit stop along the way. Maybe that was the visit mm -hmm. with the yeah, dissidents. That's not the Havana that was a... What are you, that's, that's not, not the Havana Cathedral. That's no, not the Cathedral. I've from... seen pictures of yes, it, and that's not that's the Havana Cathedral. Right. So this was a, I guess, an unannounced drop-by. Perhaps that was the meeting with dissidents. We just don't know at this point. That's one way, I guess, to evade arrest. You put them in another church. <laughs> it's nice to see so many people on the streets to greet His Holiness. I know the streets are packed with people. There may be. That may be the Church of the Jesuits in Havana. Yeah, has the that, sacred heart. The sacred heart he has a statue of Ignatius uh -huh. of Loyola. He yes. So maybe he was just visiting the Jesuits um, in in uh, Havana. Maybe that's who that was, and not dissidents at all. It could just have been his Jesuit confreres. So uh, we are going to take another little break. We are still awaiting the Pope's. Vesper service at the Cathedral of Havana, where he is purported, reported, to be meeting with dissidents. We will return in a moment. EWTN News live coverage of Pope Francis in Cuba continues. Stay right there. EWTN News live coverage of Pope Francis in Cuba. I'm Raymond Arroyo. In a few moments, we'll bring you Vespers with Pope Francis and his clergy and seminarians from Cuba. We'll bring you that live from the Havana Cathedral. Joining me, as always, here on set are members of our papal posse, Robert Royal, editor-in-chief of the CatholicThing.org, Father Gerald Murray of the Archdiocese of New York, and Father Roberto Cid, the director of the Radio Paz in the Archdiocese of Miami. Now, we've, we've gotten some clarification on some of what those of you who joined us just a little while ago were seeing. Father Seed, tell us uh, about that gift that was presented to yeah. the Pope by Raul Castro. Yeah. It was a. It was, it was definitely old. not the, the image of Christ that I mentioned, okay. because the image of Christ that I, that I understood was being restored in Cuba was actually uh, not restored, but when Castro came, he planted pine trees, I am told, uh -huh. around a, an image of Christ that sits on the Bay of Havana. Mm. And a couple of years ago, at the request of the Pope, he took the pine trees down so that mm. young Cubans didn't even know that there was an image of Christ there. Oh. Uh, and uh, this is apparently a gift that he gave to the Pope, or mm -hmm. I don't know, perhaps he plans to have the crucifix yeah. in the presidential palace. And, no. and we should say, on the way to uh, this Vesper service, the Pope stopped at the Church of the Sacred Heart. He had a meeting with some people it looked like it could have been Jesuits, his fellow Jesuits, but we're not certain. Now, at, it is the Jesuit parish that he stopped at, and he literally got out of the Pope Mobile, went in, met with them for a moment, took some pictures, shook hands, but we didn't see any faces, so we're not sure was that some of the purported members of the dissident community that we're hearing the Pope might meet with today, or is that meeting forthcoming? You'll have to stay with us to find out. Uh, your thoughts on this as you watch what's happening here. How important would it be should the Pope meet with 
at least two members of the dissident community, as we're hearing? Well, it'd be the first time any pope ever did such a thing. And mm -hmm. um, it would be curious, if he does do this, it would be curious to find out how he was able to arrange this. Because as we've been saying, the Castro, the Castro brothers have kept those, those dissidents very much hidden. We saw early this morning when he was on his way to the mass that the minute they pop their heads up, security details descend on them and they disappear for a while. Uh, just this morning, we heard that some of the ladies in white were arrested and then released too late to attend the mass. So, um, you know, they're, they're very active in, in surveying these people, and there's a vast network. There's nothing mm -hmm. that happens that they don't know about. They have their block committees, defense of the, the revolution and whatnot. So if he, could, if he could get through that network, it would be remarkable. Uh -huh. And maybe, maybe they move that, some of those dissidents to that church, that, that Ignatian church, to escape the kind of attention that no doubt will be at this Havana Cathedral, but we'll see what happens. The Pope Mobile is now approaching the Havana Cathedral. You hear the bells ringing, and uh, any moment the Pope will step from the Pope Mobile and join his clergy and religious for a Vesper service. And we will bring it all to you live as it happens. There will be an address to the clergy, and following this, the Pope will meet with students, students in Cuba. The Pope is, um, you'll notice he, he's walking with some difficulty. It could be that sciatica that he, of course, suffers with, uh, or maybe he pulled his back, but he, he, he does have a bit of a pronounced limp that um, I've never seen before covering him, and um, really you see it now. The exterior of the Havana Cathedral. This is the Cathedral of the Virgin Mary of the Immaculate Conception in Havana. We sometimes forget, uh-oh, I've got a little stumble there. We sometimes forget this is a 78-year-old man. Oh, he's, he's going over to the... The Argentine oh, flag. Oh, somebody had the Argentine flag, so yes. he, he had to go <laughs> greet his countrymen. A little personal privilege, but you see, he's really—he really is having a difficult time you see. on these steps. Look, and oh see, boy! See how he each step he takes with the right foot first, yeah, because it's the left leg where he has the sciatica. That's, that's bothering him, yeah. yeah. He's greeting the crowd outside the cathedral. This cathedral dates back to 1748. And this is the tradition when the bishop or the pope goes to the cathedral that he blesses it with holy water as he enters. Mm -hmm. And now he'll make the procession up the center aisle. He also kisses the crucifix. Francis, our friend, Jesus is with you. Mm -hmm. And the choir singing, you are Peter, yes. who is Petrus. And all the iPads and smartphones are out to capture this moment, a modern reality even in this 18th century cathedral. Pope making his way down the aisle as he does so often, reaching out to people on both sides, and they've all crowded in to um, to touch him. There are a lot of missionaries of charity who were at the Mass this morning. Of course, the Mass really focused on mercy and the Pope as a missionary of mercy. A lot of missionaries of charity and uh, other sisters there. Yes, in, they are. In full habits. Many, many sisters. Beautiful. We'll let you enjoy some of the uh, beautiful choir here. 
This is EWTN's live continuing coverage of the Pope in Cuba. image of the Virgin. And this looks like Ignatius of Loyola in the foreground here. The Jesuits founded this cathedral. So he should really feel at home. By the way, that gift earlier from um, Raul Castro, they, they call that the migrant Christ. So our analysis was correct. Um, it is a, uh, this is one of the sisters here. And he's greeting many of the religious gathered. This is a Vesper service for priests, religious. And you can see the Archbishop of Miami there in the second row. Aha. Uh -huh. Archbishop Wensky, Thomas yes. Wensky. Can you see him there at the corner, upper corner of the mm -hmm. uh, These may be the members of the dissident communities, by the way, on the edges. They had pictures in their hands, perhaps of imprisoned relatives. Perhaps. sitting there, mm -hmm. the Pope's left. Querido Santo Padre, llenos de júbilo, nos hemos congregado en nuestra iglesia Catedral de San Cristóbal We're gathered de in this cathedral of San Christopher of Havana, de María Inmaculada. under the loving gaze of the Virgin Mary, sacerdotes, diáconos, bishops, religiosos, priests, religiosas, seminarians, otras religious, consagradas, and other consecrated persons, para acoger seminarians, a querido Papa Francisco, to receive our most beloved Pope Francis, su palabra, 
orientadora. To hear your guiding word as the father pastor. Santo Padre encuentra aquí a sacerdotes jóvenes y ancianos. The Holy Father meets young priests and seminarians here. Como misioneros que nos prestan un apoyo invaluable. And other priests who come from other countries who give missionary service. También a religiosos, religiosas y otras personas consagradas. And other religious and consecrated persons, young and not so young. Distintas nacionales. Cubans or from other nations. Estos últimos these are also missionaries who serve with love and devotion our church and our people. This group, apparently very different, are, have the same love of Christ in communion with the pastors and give ecclesial witness showing forth the following of Jesus Christ in his evangelizing work. This is proper to our church, which unites us in the service to the people. The church in Cuba is a poor church. And we have testimony in our priests who are diocesan and religious deacons, consecrated persons. And they give admirable testimony of this poverty. La pobreza, la que contribuye de modo singular. This poverty contributes in a singular way to the fraternity and unity of all of us here. No hay aquí espacios fáciles. You don't have easy places here for competition que no sean los del servicio or jealousy. Y el don de sí. Everything is y given for service. Y todos los que permanecemos aquí, All that remain here pueblo, are serving pastorally our people. And we must be necessarily poor in pastoral in resources, but also in the way we live. We hope, Holy Father, that your personal witness will encourage us to love this poverty which gives fruit in the church in our land and give also to missionaries and missionaries coming from other places the joy of serving as gospel witnesses. Dear Pope Francis, asking with love and devotion your paternal blessing and the testimony of your word, may you give a renewing seed of renewal in our church of hope. So spoke Cardinal Jaime Ortega, Archbishop of Havana. And now the Holy Father. Um, well, I believe there's an address by a sister yes. first. Yes. And then the Pope will speak. I'm told it is very hot and humid in this cathedral. Here's Sister. Beloved Holy Father. At the end of my formation, I found out that my community was sending me to care for those who have uh, disabilities. I was afraid, I, w I had fear, I cried out, I cried a lot. Of all the possibilities in my ministry, that would be the most demanding. I still remember the words of a sister. You go to the house of mercy, the most demanding of you. But the greatest demand would be for you to look constantly at Christ. Filled with God, you will embrace human misery, and that's to be merciful. And above all, you will learn to be the mother of the poor. Many times, when the mission becomes tough, I remember these words. 
La Edad de Oro es una institución dirigida y administrada por el Ministerio de Salud Pública. La institución es manejada por el Ministerio de Salud Pública. Tiene 200 pacientes de ambos sexos con diferentes patologías. Encefalopatía crónica. Las edades oscilan entre los 12 y 71 años. Las edades oscilan entre los 12 y 71 años. Pero por su condición frágil y dependiente, por su condición frágil y dependiente, When it comes to care, mobility, comprehension, communication, it doesn't matter the age. We call them, we call them children. Cuánto me ha sorprendido el padre bueno regalándome la felicidad en medio de ellos. The good father has surprised me, giving me the gift of joy in the midst, in their midst. El lugar donde vivo es bello. I can say that the place where I live is beautiful. Those who have been there know what I'm talking about. It is not in the cleanliness and harmony that it is beautiful. It is beautiful because there, within the most frail and weak of his children, God lives. Porque el lugar en que estás es tierra sagrada. Fueron las palabras que escuchó Moisés. Moses heard those words from God. Take out your sandals because you're stepping on holy ground. De la zarza, un arbusto sin. From the burning bush. Inútil y hasta despreciado. A useless and forsaken bush. Como medio para. He receives God as a means, or God serves or uses that bush as a means for His revelation. And therefore, the ground becomes holy. Los pies se desnudan para sentir el contacto de la tierra. By faith, his feet are. En señal de reverencia y respeto. He removes his shoes so that his feet may touch the ground. As a reverence of respect. Cada día queremos vivir en nuestro trato con los pacientes. That's what we endeavor to live out day in day out in our treatment of our patients. Descalzarnos ante el misterio de Dios latente en la vida de aquí. To be descalzed before the mystery of God present. In the life of those who are invisible for many, disposable, they are considered a burden, a useless burden. Even though most of our children cannot speak a word, they nonetheless are able to communicate. It was necessary for me to adapt my senses to theirs and be able to discern in a, in a shout, in a cry, in a scream, joy or pain. An anxious look that demands attention or responds to the greeting of good morning. It has been a slow learning process. At the beginning, they all seemed the same and the sounds were all the same. But you begin to know them, each and every one of them, in their own personality. They also practice mercy with us. Con mucha paciencia. They teach us patiently to to understand them. Donándonos el trato brusco en algún. Forgiving us when we are rough with them. Esperándonos con sus vidas. Or asking questions of ourselves with their lives. Cuando regalan una sonrisa. When they smile at us. Una mirada de alegría. When they look at us with joy. Sé que es solo por eso. Solo por hacer feliz a uno. It is just because we have made them happy. Vale la pena entregar la vida. And it is. Porque ya. It is worth giving out your life. In order to serve these people, because in them you find the kingdom of God. Beloved Holy Father, sirve este sencillo testimonio para reconocer toda la labor asistencial. My simple witness wishes to recognize the labor, the assistance, the formation that many religious communities carry out, both females and males, religious life in Cuba. In its different charisms, in action and contemplation, endeavors to reach the sick with a merciful love, the elderly, the youth, the disabled, as a way to recognize the infinite dignity of each person, and as an indissoluble part of the proclamation of the good news of the gospel. Somos testigos en medio de nuestro pueblo. All of us, as church, are witnesses in the midst of our people. Siempre en la guía de Jesucristo, buen pastor. We trust in the guidance of Jesus, the good shepherd, 
and in the bless and in Mary our mother Padre, holy father I ask for your blessing For those of you just joining us, this is Pope Francis live in Havana at the Havana Cathedral. He's meeting with religious, his bishops, his clergy on this island nation. He's having a private word here with his sister. Giving her a blessing. And now we expect the Pope will um, offer his own thoughts, perhaps after the, the prayers of this Vesper service. It's a, it's a prayer service for them all. Ah, the stole is in place, so this is the formal liturgical part. Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston, just behind um, Archbishop Martini, the um, Master of Ceremonies. There. Dios mío, ven en mi auxilio. Gloria al Padre, y al Hijo, y al Espíritu Santo. Evening is falling, stay with us. This is the hymn of the Emmaus disciples.
de la segunda carta a los Corintios. Bendito sea Dios, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, Padre de misericordia y Dios de todo consuelo. Él nos alienta en nuestras luchas hasta el punto de poder nosotros alentar a los demás en cualquier lucha, repartiendo con ellos el ánimo que nosotros recibimos de Dios. There's a reading from 2 Corinthians. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of Miss Mercy and God of all consuelo, all consolation. Now he's reading from the Gospel of St. John. At that time, Jesus said, Holy Father, take care in your name of those you have given me, so that they be one as we are one. But now I'm going to you, And I say these things in the world so that they have the same joy fulfilled in me. I have given them your word. I don't ask that you take them from the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, as I, as I am not of the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. This is EWTN's live coverage of Pope Francis at the Havana Cathedral for today's Vesper service. He's joined by members of the clergy, religious, brothers and sisters, and even some uh, lay people, but, and his bishops, of course, seated behind him in the choir stalls there. And now we expect the Holy Father's address at this Vesper service. It's been a long day. For the Pope and uh, and for all of us but especially for him he's had to move through all these venues Cardinal Jaime, Cardinal Jaime nos habló de pobreza. Cardinal Jaime spoke to us about poverty y la hermana Jailenis and, and sister nos habló del más pequeño, He spoke about más the littlest among the little. Son todos niños. They're all children. Yo tenía preparada una homilía. I had a homily prepared. En base a los textos bíblicos. Based on the biblical texts. Pero cuando But when hablan los profetas. The prophets speak. Y todo sacerdote es profeta. And every priest is a prophet. Todo bautizado es profeta. Every baptized is a prophet. Todo consagrado es profeta. Every consecrated person is a prophet. Vamos a hacerle caso a ellos. We'd better listen to them. Y entonces yo le voy a dar la homilía al so Cardenal Jaime. And so I'm going to give my homily to the Cardinal so that he can distribute it and publish it. And then you meditate on it. Y ahora And now let us speak about what they say, about what these two prophets said. So here he goes, dispensing with the homily, dispensing with the prepared remarks. This is Pope Francis off the cuff, unplugged, as we say in the United States. This is EWTN's live coverage of Pope Francis, his final event of the day. Cardinal Jaime uttered a very uncomfortable word. Very uncomfortable. That he goes against, even with the cultural structure, quote unquote, of the world. He said poverty. Y la repitió varias veces. And he repeated it several times. Y pienso que el Señor quiso que la escucháramos. I think the Lord wanted us to hear that word. 
y la recibiéramos en el and that we received it in our hearts. El espíritu mundano no la conoce. The spirit of the world does not know it. No la quiere. Does not want it. La esconde. Hides it. No por pudor. Not because of some modesty, because it despises it. Y si tiene que pecar y ofender a Dios, and if he has to sin and offend the Lord, no God, pobreza, so that poverty doesn't reach them, he goes ahead and does it. Del mundo no ama the spirit of the world del hijo de Dios. does not love the way of the Son of God, que se vació a sí mismo. who emptied himself se hizo pobre. and became poor, se hizo nada. became nothing. Se humilló. He humiliated himself uno de in order to be one of us. La pobreza que le dio miedo a aquel muchacho. Poverty that uh, made that young man afraid. He had fulfilled all the commandments. Y cuando Jesús le dijo, Mira, vende todo But when Jesus told him, sold everything you have y a los and give it to the poor, se puso triste. He became sad. Le tuvo miedo a la pobreza. He was afraid of poverty. La pobreza. Siempre tratamos de escamotearla. We always try to curtail poverty, as it were. Sea por cosas razonables. Be it because of reasonable things. Pero estoy hablando de escamotearla en el corazón. But I'm talking about the heart. Que hay que saber administrar los bienes. Es una obligación. It's an obligation to manage our goods. The goods are a gift from God. Cuando esos bienes entran en el corazón. But when those goods empiezan a conducir la vida. Enter into my heart and become the guide, the leading, the leading principle of my heart. Then you're lost. Como Jesús. Then you're not like Jesus. Tienes tu seguridad. Donde la tenía el joven triste. Your security is found on the same place that the young man who went away sad had it. You priests, consecrated men, consecrated women. I think it can be helpful to you. What Saint Ignatius told us, and this is not advertising for the Jesuits. <laughs> but he said, poverty was the wall and the mother of consecrated life. It's the mother because it engendered trust in God. And, and it was the wall because it protected it from any mundanity, from mundane affections. How many, how many souls destroyed, generous souls, such as the sad young man, began well, and then fell in love with the mundane, mundanity, worldly, and they ended up very bad. Mediocre. Sin amor. They ended up without love. Porque la la riqueza because richness impoverishes you, mal. but in a bad way. Nos quita lo mejor que tenemos. It takes away from Nos us the best we have. En la única riqueza It makes us poor in the only richness that is worthy, which is to have your security in God, to your trust in God. El espíritu de pobreza. The spirit of poverty. El espíritu de despojo. El espíritu the spirit of emptying oneself. De dejarlo todo. To leave, to set everything aside in order to follow Christ. Este dejarlo todo no lo invento. That set everything aside. It's not my invention. It appears in the gospel many times. En los llamados de los primeros y dejaron las barcas, las redes. The call of the first disciples, they left their boats, their nets, and followed him. Los que dejaron todo para seguir. They left everything behind to follow Jesus. Una vez me contaba 
un viejo cura sabio. An old priest who was very wise told me once. Cuando se mete he was talking about those times when the spirit of richness and worldly riches in the heart of a consecrated man or woman, of a priest or bishop or pope, or whatever, whoever it may be. When one begins to amass a fortune in order to ensure one's future, The, the future is not placed on Jesus, but on an insurance company. For example, a religious congregation begins to save and save. God is so good. That sends them a disastrous administrator that leads them into bankruptcy. Los economos desastros. Those are the best gifts of God to his church, disastrous managers. Las empobre. Because they impoverish it. Nuestra Santa Madre Iglesia. Our Holy Mother Church. Es pobre. Is poor. Dios la quiere pobre. God wishes her to be poor. Como quiso pobre a nuestra Santa Madre María. As he wished our Holy Mother Mary to be poor. Amen la pobreza como a madre. Love poverty as a mother. Y simplemente, and simply, le sugiero, I, si alguno de I suggest, tiene ganas, if any one of you, de preguntarse, ¿cómo está wishes mi to ask de pobreza? himself, how is my spirit of poverty? ¿Cómo está mi despojo interior? How is it my detachment, interior detachment? Creo que puede hacer bien I think it can do some good to our consecrated life, vida to our uh, life as presbyters. Después de todo, After all, no nos olvidemos que es la primera de las bienaventuras. Let us not forget it is the first of the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who are not attached to the richness, to the power, to the powers of this world. And then sister talked to us about the last, the least, the littlest ones. Aunque sean grandes, Even though they may be old, uno termina tratándolos como niños, one treats them as children se presentan como niños. because they appear to us as children. El más pequeño. The least among you. Jesús, it's, a, it's a saying of Jesus. En el protocolo. It is in the protocol. Sobre el cual vamos a ser on which we're going to be judged. Lo que what, al what you did to the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Hay servicios pastorales. There's pastoral services pueden ser más gratificantes that may be de more gratifying humano. from a human no point of view that doesn't mean that they're bad or worldly Pero uno but when one busca seeks la preferencia interior, an interior preference pequeño, for the least one for the forsaken one al más enfermo, for the one who is ill al que nadie tiene en cuenta, for the one who that no one considers al que nadie quiere, the one who no one likes el más pequeño, the, the, le the least sirve one al más pequeño, when one serves the least Jesús, the least one one is serving Jesus in a superlative manner, manner. A vos te mandaron donde no querías ir. you were sent where you didn't want to go y lloraste. and you cried You cried because you didn't like it. That doesn't mean that you're a crying nun. May God, may God spare us crying nuns. Those who are always lamenting things. Eso. 
No es mío. That's not mine. Santa Teresa. Santa Teresa used to say that. Santa Teresa, Saint Teresa used to say that to her nuns. Why de aquella monja que anda todo el día lamentando? Woe to that nun that is lamenting every single day because she was the victim of an injustice. Why de la monja que anda diciendo hicieronme sin razón? Why woe to the nun that is that kept saying they did to me without reason? You were young, you had, other, you had other visions, perhaps you thought that at, in a school you could do better, more things. You could organize futures, a future for the youth, but they sent you there. House of Mercy, where tenderness and mercy, the tenderness and the mercy of the Father are patently visible. Where the tenderness and mercy of God becomes a caress. How many religious men and women Y repito el verbo, queman burn. su vida. And I repeat their lives, burn their lives. De Touching, caressing what's considered disposable matter. Those whom the world disposes of. Desprecia. Whom the world despises. No whom the world will prefer that they not be. Con métodos de análisis, whom the world today with new analytical methods when they are foreseen that they may come with a degenerative sickness the world wants to send them back before they are born the least one Y una chica joven, and a young girl, llena de ilusiones, filled with illusions, su vida consagrada, begins her consecrated life, haciendo viva la ternura de Dios, making, su misericordia, making, bringing alive the tenderness and the mercy of God. A veces no entiendo, sometimes. No saben, they don't understand, they don't know. Pero qué linda. But how nice. Es para Dios. Y qué bien que hace a uno. Por ejemplo, how good it is for, go for God. And, it, and it's so good. For example, the smile of a person that is paralyzed. Or when they, are, when, when they want to kiss you and they are drooling and they... they there you have saliva over all your face. That's the tenderness of God. That's the mercy of God. Or when they are angry and they hit you. And to burn my life. That way, with disposable matter, in the eyes of the world. Eso nos habla solamente De una persona. That speaks to us only about one person. It speaks to us about Jesus. That because of the mercy of the Father, he became nothing. He emptied himself. Says the letter to the Philippi Philippians, chapter 2. He, be he emptied himself. Those to whom you dedicate your life. No porque lo quisieron. Imitate no Jesus. Not because they wanted. El mundo los trajo así. Because, because the world brought them like that. Son nada. They're considered nothing. Se los esconde, no They're se los hidden. Muestra. They're not shown. O no se los visita. They're not visited. Y si se puede, y and todavía if se possible, tiempo, and they find time for it, se los manda de vuelta. They are sent back to the Creator.
Gracias Thank you por lo que haces for what you do. Vos. Gracias and in your person, thank you to all these women and so many women consecrated al servicio de lo to the service inútil. of what is useless no se puede hacer empresa, because no, se puede no, ganar no corporation plata, can be made, no, no money can be made, nothing can be done, constructivo, entre comillas, quote unquote constructive con esos with those con brothers, menores, con with the least ones. Ahí resplandece Jesús. In that place, Jesus shines brightly. Ahí resplandece mi opción por Jesús. And in there shines brightly my option for Jesus. Thank you to you and to all the consecrated women and men that are here. And that concludes the Pope's unplugged. Or if he's not done yet, he's only halfway through. This is Pope Francis in Havana. Padre, yo no soy Father, monja. I am not a nun. Yo no cuido enfermo, yo soy I do not cura. care for uh, sick people. I am a priest. I am at the parish. O ayudo a un párroco. Or I help a pastor. ¿Cuál es mi Jesús predilecto? Which one is my, my chosen Jesus? Which, who is the least one? Who is that one who shows me the mercy of the Father? Where do I find him? Obviously, I continue down the protocol of Matthew 25. There you have them all. The hungry, the incarcerated, the sick. But there is a privileged place for the, for the priest. Where the least one appears, the, that one that is the least of all. And that's the confessional. And there, when that man or woman show their misery to you, be careful, that's the same one that you have and that you were redeemed from by Christ. When they show their misery to you, please, do not chastise him, her. No lo castigues. Do not punish him. Si no tenés pecado, más tirale la primera piedra. If you don't have any sin, throw a stone. Pero only under that condition. Y pensá que vos. If you think that you can be that person. Y pensá que vos. Think that you. Potencialmente podés llegar más bajo. Are potentially are a potentially able to go fur further down at that moment. You have a treasure in your hands, which is the mercy of the Father. Please, please to the priests, do not grow tired of forgiving. Be forgivers. No se canse. Do not grow tired Perdona. of forgiving. Como lo hacía Jesús. As Jesus did. No se escondan. Do not hide. Miedos o en rigideces. In fears or rigidities. Así como esta monja y todas las que están en. Be like this nun. And those were here. No se ponen furiosas cuando encuentran al enfermo sucio. They are not angry. They do not get angry when they find the sick person filthy. They just clean him. They care for him. When the penitent comes to you, don't feel bad. Don't be neurotic. Don't drive him away. Don't chase him away from the confessional. Jesús los abrazaba. Jesus embraced them. 
Jesús los quería. Jesus loved them. Mañana festejamos San Mateo. Tomorrow we celebrate Saint Matthew. Cómo robaba ese. Además, cómo traicionaba su pueblo. Matthew was a thief. He was a traitor. El Evangelio que a la noche. And the gospel says that Jesus went and had dinner with him and some some other people like him. Otros como él. Jesus went and had dinner with him and some some other people like him. San Ambrosio. Saint Ambrose. Tiene una frase que a mí me conmueve. Has a saying that I find very moved. Donde hay misericordia. Where there is mercy. Está el espíritu de Jesús. There's the spirit of Jesus. Donde hay rigidez. Where there's rigidity. Están solamente sus ministros. There's only his ministers. Hermano sacerdote, hermano obispo. Brother priest, brother bishop. No le tengas miedo. Do not be afraid of the mercy of God. Let it flow through your hands. Y por tu abrazo de perdón. And for your forgiving embrace. Because that man, that woman. Son el más pequeño. Are the least. Y por lo tanto. And therefore. Jesús. They are Jesus. Esto es lo que se me ocurre decir. This is what uh, comes to my mind after hearing these these prophets. Que el Señor nos conceda. May the Lord give us these graces that the two of them have sown in our heart: poverty and mercy. Porque ahí está Jesús. Because there we find Jesus. Father Sid for translating, and there was that, that quote from St. Ambrose, where there is mercy, there is Jesus. Where there is rigidity, it's just his ministers there. Interesting observation from Pope Francis. Uh, again, this extempore unplugged address. He cast aside the homily that was prepared and uh, offered this very moving, uh, really, advice uh, prophetic advice to his clergy, to religious. Uh, we will try to recount some of that and unpack some of it for you. Uh, this is live. You're watching the Pope at the Havana Cathedral with his bishops, clergy, and religious in Cuba. He started with Ca Cardinal Jaime Ortega, used that uncomfortable word that goes against the culture of the world. He said poverty and he repeated it. And he called Ortega and the sister that addressed them prophets. And that sort of inspired him to cast aside the, um, mm. the written text and, and do this feverino on uh, poverty of the heart and that your security is not found in worldly pursuits or worldliness or the riches of the world. That's an insurance man, he said. <laughs> That's a different thing. Um, he even made a few jokes along the way. Uh, St. Ignatius said to us, poverty is the wall and the mother of consecrated life. And that was not an advertisement to the Jesuits, he said. Now we will let you hear some of the prayer from the Havana Cathedral. Gloria al Padre, y al Hijo, y al Espíritu Santo.
hermanos y hermanas, a Dios nuestro Padre, por medio de Jesucristo su Hijo, que nos llama con la gracia de las diversas vocaciones para servir con alegría. These are the prayer of the faithful. Pray, brothers and sisters, to God our Father, 
through Jesus Christ, his son, who calls us with his grace in diverse vocations to serve with joy our people and announce to them the joy of the gospel. Oremos por la Santa Iglesia de Dios, por el sucesor de Pedro, el Papa Francisco, que con los dones del Espíritu pueda We pray for the Holy Church of God and for the successor of Peter, Pope Francis, that with the gifts of the Spirit he can follow pastoring and renovating the flock of God to, uh, entrusted to him, and that his visit to Cuba as a missionary of mercy will give us enthusiasm in preaching the merciful love of God and in our priestly life. We pray to the Lord. We present to this, the Lord all the religious men and women missionaries who have come to announce the kingdom of God in Cuba. That living together with the people, we may feel, despite all tiredness, the gratifying happiness of sowing the gospel in so many hearts, doing all without asking anything in return. We pray to the Lord. Let us raise up our prayer for all the religious women in their different apostolic and contemplative charisms, that the presence are in the world without being in the world serves to make manifest the richness of the gospel of the Lord and give testimony of the tenderness, infinite tenderness of God. We pray to the Lord. Let us now pray to the Lord for permanent deacons that our vocation to diaconal service be a richness for the life of all the communities in which we work and that our charism of service help others to encounter consolation, rest, and hope. Oremos. We offer you, our God, through the intercession of Mary, the Virgin Mother, our lives. We have said yes to the Lord in our youth to live as consecrated persons in different forms of religious life. Help us to be faithful to our vocation and to the poor in the midst of our country, which so needs, has so many needs and hopes from, and hopes so much from us. We pray to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the priestly vocation with enthusiasm, we give ourselves to you. Give us, good Father, the gift of persevering in your calling and renew, renew always our, the option to serve the joy of the gospel of Christ in our beloved nation. We pray to the Lord.
Oh Dios, que has puesto la plenitud de la ley en el amor de ti. Oh God, who has put the fullness of the law in the love of you and of our neighbor. Help us to fulfill your commandments to so arrive at eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and is God forever and ever. Señor, esté con ustedes. Bendito sea el nombre del Señor. Nuestro auxilio es el nombre del Señor. La bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, descienda sobre ustedes y permanezca para siempre. Amén. Les pido, por favor, que no se olviden de rezar por mí y pueden ir en paz. And that concludes Pope Francis's Vespers service with his religious out of the Havana Cathedral. There is one event left. Believe it or not, <laughs> the poor Pope is probably can't wait to get back to uh, the nunciature. His last event is a meeting with young people. That is forthcoming. We will bring you that live as it happens. This is EWTN's live coverage. Father Jerry Murray, Robert Royal, Father Roberto Seed, still in place <laughs> all these hours later. Nearly 12, I might remind you all. Pope is blessing um, probably a cornerstone of a church, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. That looks like what it is. And um, making his way out of the cathedral, we heard I, that impromptu mm -hmm. address. I, I think uh, he is also going to bless a statue of St. Joseph that was sent from Buenos Aires. You know, the Pope has a great devotion to St. Joseph. Yes. And there was no statue of St. Joseph in the cathedral. So uh, a statue of St. Joseph was given as a gift from, uh, from, Argentina, from Argentine Catholics uh -huh. to the cathedral to be enthroned during the visit of the Holy Father. Well, let's see if we can get a peek at it. The cameraman seems to be lost behind one of the security guards there. Cardinal Amy Ortega and the Pope have uh, exited the uh, nave of the church are making their way, well, they're making their way through the nave of the church out. It was quite an address. Uh, I think distinguished more by the impromptu nature, and it was, you know, this is typical Pope Francis returning to form. Uh, in contrast to the Pope Francis we've watched for the last day, um, a very restrained Pope Francis, now we see him sort of really engaged again and uh, back freelancing, if you will, which is something that he, you know, this is, again, true to form, true to form for him. So uh, we are delighted that you've continued to stay with us. We have one more event. Don't go anywhere. Pope Francis is going to now move to the Felix Varela Cultural Center. I believe it's very near the Havana Cathedral. He'll go there to meet with young people. That should be happening momentarily. Let's unpack some of this. I have some video to share with you, if we have that ready. Um, well, I don't want to go to that yet because uh, I see fresh footage coming in. This is the Pope walking, I guess, out of the cathedral on his way to the Varela Center. That's at least yes, what it looks like Yes, and I believe like that's me. the courtyard of the mm -hmm. Obispado, the, uh, the bishop's mm -hmm. house. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, these might be the dissidents here. Could very well be. These may be the dissidents that the Pope is meeting with. There was talk that he would be meeting with some dissident uh, members. I don't know if it's the ladies in white or not. They're certainly dressed in white. Uh huh. Boy, there have been a lot of events here mm -hmm. packed into yes, this schedule. Yes. It's been a grueling day for the Pope, really, since 
early this morning, and you can see, you know, he, he, he looks tired. He does. Not as tired as I look. He does. He, he looks tired. I love the altar boys with the, with the <laughs> <Yes>. iPad. <laughs> Everybody's got their cameras out. Uh -huh. A little boy in a wheelchair. Oh, beautiful. Mm, Pope greeting him. Child the boy gave him a gift. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, it's raining. Uh, yes, the uh, rain. The rain may be coming. Doesn't look like he's taking the uh, umbrella. Ah, now they're making him climb another set of stairs here. Oh, that's for the meeting this with the must, youth. This must be the meeting with the youth outside. And the young people are in the rain. All the umbrellas uh, are yes. out. Or simply greeting the people that gathered outside the cathedral to see him. Wow, look at this crowd. This is young people who've come, waited in the rain, the drizzle, to see Pope Francis. And he'll now address them. There'll be a quick um, welcome which Father Sid will uh, provide some translation for us. In this emblematic place for our church. In this meeting we greet you, awaiting with enthusiasm your words, believers and non-believers, students of the different, different universities in Havana, that meet here as brothers, in the, one, in the only Cuban family. The stage cannot be more relevant and eloquent, the seat of the old seminary, San Carlos, which has become a cultural center, bearing the name of one of the most famous Cubans of history, the venerable Father Felix Varela and Morales. The first one who taught us to think an, an, an eminent education in civic and Christian values faithful disciple of Christ, who was able to forgive his enemies, helping the poor and offering his life for a fatherland that was united, prosperous, and uh, forged by the values and virtue. In this house, the first few steps of our fatherland were given and the words of Father Varela to the youth in his letters to Elpidio resonate. Tell them that they are the sweet hope of the fatherland and that there is no fatherland without virtue and no virtue with, without piety. Santo Padre. Holy Father. We feel particularly addressed to us the invitation to a cultural ecology that you issued in your encyclical Laudato Si, an ecology that entails the care for our cultural riches and is inseparable from, from, our, from our nation. Just as this place was the place where thought was born and the Cuban identity was forged. We want our presence to continue to build our cultural identity, not just uh, not in the sense of the monuments of the past, but in its living sense, dynamic, participative, where no one is excluded. The church has the duty to accompany these times and the youth must be the protagonist. Holy Father, some young people will present to you a cross that will preside the preparation of the World Youth Day next year, 2016.
con el afecto de este pueblo que lo acompaña. With the affection of these people who welcomes you and listens to you, we ask you, Holy Father, your paternal blessing. Querido Papa Francisco, beloved Holy Father Fra Francis, the youth of Cuba are here with, with you today. Somos muchachas y muchachos de líos profundos que a veces nos llevan a perder la fe. We are men and women that come from turmoils, deep turmoils, that sometimes lead us to lose our faith, but we are able to recover. And in the face of the very difficult challenges of our social economic reality. We travel by public transportation to go to work or to university. But our hectic life does not take away our joy of living that we want to share with you, our Father and Shepherd. Before you, Holy Father Francis, there's young people, diverse, plural, Christians from all denominations, those who practice Afro-Cuban religions, believers of simple faith and deep, non-denominational, non non-believers. Desde la ideología, but there are, di there are differences of thought that go from ideology, religion, or any other projection. What unites us is the hope of a future of profound change in Cuba, where our country becomes a country, a home for all of their children, regardless of the way they, they think. The limitations of Cuban young people today are many. They are faced by many other young people in other places. But we don't want to waste our time with you, Holy Father, in these things that we all know. In this moment that you dedicate to us in a special way, we want to tell you something. Our greatest strength is to maintain our solidarity that helps us beyond any obstacle. Today, we want to tell you about our dreams, but we want to ask you to pray for our country, for our Cuban families, for our friends and, and acquaintances, those who are here or those who have left. We want to ask a special favor renewing us the hope that we can grow, study, work, walk, dream, and be happy in this complex reality that we live. Help us, Holy Father, to be young people that welcomes those who think different, that we are not that we're not closed in on religion or ideology, that we avoid indifferentism. The May we be able to interpret the signs of our times as we live and hold our hands so that we can build a Cuba similar to the one that our national hero wanted, a Cuba with all and for the good of all. And may this encounter with you Allow us, allow our country to become a land of reconciliation, a space for the culture of encounter. According, according to the teachings of our beloved Father Felix Varela, who called us to be the sweet hope of the country. Holy Father, the water confirms the joy of the uh, of the Cuban, Cuban youth. The water will not stop us. As it won't stop the church. Holy Father, welcome to Cuba. The youth of Cuba love you. This is Leonardo Fernandez, a young Cuban man uh, addressing the Pope on behalf of the young people gathered here, the students. Really impassioned address urging change 
profound change in Cuba. Wonderful. Based in faith, rooted in faith. Probably the most explicit message we've heard throughout this visit. You're standing and I am sitting. What a shame. <laughs> You know why I'm sitting? Because I took notes of some of the things he said, our friend. And, uh, and I want to talk to you about them. A word that hit me hard. Dream. Un a Latin American writer used to say people have two eyes one made of flesh and one made of glass with the eye made of flesh we see, we see what we look at with the eye made of glass we see what we dream of. That's nice, isn't it? In the objective facts of life, we have to allow for the ability to dream. A young man, a young person who is not capable of dreaming, is closed in on himself. Sometimes one dreams of things that will never happen. Dream of them, desire them, search for new horizons, open yourself up. Open yourself up to great things. I don't know if in Cuba they use the word, but we Argentinians say, don't shrink, don't shrink. Open yourself up. Open yourself up and dream. Dream that the world with you may be different. Dream that if you give the best of yourself, you will help the world to be different. Do not forget that. Dream. Maybe you dream too much and, the la and life cuts you short. Never mind. Dream and tell your dreams. Tell your dreams. Speak up. Talk about the things that you desire, the great things that you desire. Because the greater the capacity to dream, even if the life cuts you short, you have, you have traveled the largest distance. But first you need to dream. You said, you mentioned you mentioned something that I underlined and wrote down. That we may welcome and accept the one who thinks differently. Sometimes we're closed. We are in our little world. Or the one, or this is the way I want him to be, or not. And you went even further. Let us not, not close in, in the ideologies, in the coterie of ideologies, or in the, in the, in the coterie of ideology or, or religion that we may grow in the face of individualism. When, when a religion becomes a clique, it loses the, the best that it, that it has, its ability to worship God, to believe in God. It is just a coterie of words. It is, it is about, I am good, you are bad. And when 
I have my ideology, my way of thinking, and you have yours. I, I, I close in on the ideology. Open hearts, open minds. If you think differently than I do, why, why shouldn't we talk? Why do we throw stones at each other over that that separates us, over that which makes us different? Why don't we shake hands in that which we have in common? I urge you to talk. We have to dare to talk about what we have in common. And then, then we can discuss those things that are different. But I say talk. I don't say fight. I don't say close in. I don't, I don't say argue. But that is only possible when one has the capacity to talk about those things that you have in common with the other, about that which we're able to work, that goal which we're work together towards. In Buenos Aires, there was a new parish in a very poor area. They were building parish halls, a group of young people from the university. And the pastor told me, why don't you come on a Saturday so that I can introduce them to you. They were working on Saturdays and Sundays in the construction. They were boys and girls from the university. I arrived and I saw them, he introduced them to me. This is the architect, he's Jewish. This is communist. He's a practicing Catholic. They were all different. But all of them were working together for the common good. That's what I call social friendship, to seek the common good. Social enmity destroys. In a family, a family is destroyed by enmity. A country is destroyed by enmity. The world is destroyed by enmity. An enmity, the greatest enmity is war. And today, we see that the world is being destroyed because of war, because we are unable to sit down and talk. Bueno, Nego let, let us negotiate. Let's see, what can we do in common? Let's see, this is something that is not negotiable. But let us not kill more people. When there's division, there is death. Death in the soul. We're killing, we're killing social, social friendship. And so I ask you, be capable to create social friendship. Then, there was another word that you said, the word hope. The young people are the hope of a, of a country. We hear, that, we hear that all over the place. But what is hope? Is it to be optimistic? No. Optimism is a state of mind. Tomorrow you wake up with a, a, an ache in the liver and you're not optimistic. Hope is something else. Hope is, is suffered. Hope is able to suffer in order to bring about its project. 
is able to sacrifice. Are you able to sacrifice for your future? Or you just want to leave the present and then let the rest uh, care for themselves? Hope is fecund, life-giving. Are you capable of giving life? Or are you going to be a young man or a woman? Spiritually sterile, without the ability to create and give to others. Without the ability to create social friendship. Without the ability to create a fatherland. Without uh, the ability to create greatness. Hope is fecund. Hope is found at work. And now, I want to talk about a very serious problem in Europe. The number of young people who are unemployed. There are countries in Europe where young people below the age of 25 live unemployed and 40% of them are unemployed. I think of one country. In another country, 47%. Another country, 50%. Evidently, a, a people which does not care to provide employment for the youth. And when I say people, I do not say just government, the entire people. If the youth do not work, the people does not have a future. The youth become part of the, of the culture of waste. And we all know that today, in this empire of the God money, things are disposable, throw away. Children are thrown away <laughs> because they are not liked. They are killed before they are born. The elderly are thrown away. I'm talking about the world in general. The elderly are thrown away because they're not productive. Some countries have enacted into law euthanasia. And how many others have a hidden euthanasia? Young people are thrown away because they don't find work. And so what do they do without work? A country that is not inventive, a people that is, does not create opportunities for work for their youth. For that young man, he is left with addictions, suicide, or go somewhere else to find Armies of destruction. This throwaway culture is hurting us all. It's depriving us of hope. And that's what you asked for. We want hope. Hope that is suffered, that is able to work, fecund gives us work and saves us from the throwaway culture. And that hope, and that hope calls people in, invites everybody in, because a people that is able to gather together to look at the future and build social friendship, even though people may think differently, that people, that people has hope. And um, if I find a young man without hope, 
Por ahí una vez dije, I, I said joven when. jubilado. It's a retired young person. Hay jóvenes que parece que se jubilan a los 22 años. There are young persons that seem to retire at the age of 22. Son jóvenes con tristeza existencial. They are uh, young people with Son existential que han sadness. Su vida They have bet their lives básico. to uh, defeatism. Son jóvenes que se lamentan. They are youth that are lamenting. Son jóvenes que se fugan de la vida. They are young people who flee from life. El camino de la esperanza The way of hope no es fácil. It's not easy. Y no se puede recorrer solo. And cannot be traveled alone. Hay un proverbio There is a proverb africano from Africa que dice, that goes, si querés ir de prisa, if you want to go fast, anda solo. go alone. Pero si querés llegar, But if you want to go far, anda acompañado. go with somebody else. Y usted, And to you, cubano, Cuban youth, Even though you may think differently, even, you, even though you may have different points of view, I wish that you go together, seeking hope, seeking the future, and the nobility of the country. And then, we began with the word dream, con otra palabra que vos dijiste. I want to end with another word that you mentioned. Y que yo la suelo usar bastante. That I use quite often. La cultura del encuentro. The culture of encounter. Por favor. Please. No nos desencontremos entre nosotros mismos. Vayamos acompañados. Let us go together. Encontrado. Together, encountered. Even though we may think differently, even, even though we may feel differently, there is something that is greater than ourselves, which is the greatness of our people, the great, greatness of our fatherland, the beauty, that sweet hope of the fatherland that we have to reach, that we have to realize. Hope of the Father, we have to Felix Varela said that. <laughs> Cardinal Jaime Ortega now embracing Pope Francis. Uh, again, this was another address that the Pope did not deliver. Did this, and this one was a three-page address we'd all been provided with before the event. And... Uh, The Pope was inspired by what uh, Leonardo Fernandez, the young man who greeted him, uh, said at the beginning. Oh, he's back at the oh. microphone. Pope Francis unplugged again. Bueno, me despido. Me, I say farewell to you. Lo mejor. I wish the best for you. I wish you everything that I said. I wish for you. I will pray for you. Y le pido And I ask you que recen to pray mí. for me. Y si alguno de ustedes And if any one of you no es creyente, is a non nonbeliever no and cannot pray because you don't believe, you can pray, <laughs> at least I ask you to wish me good things. <laughs> Que Dios los bendiga. May the Lord bless you. Los haga caminar. And make you walk. En este camino de esperanza. In this path of hope. La cultura del encuentro. Towards the culture of encounter. Evitando esos conventillos de los cuales habló. Avoiding those cotteries that he spoke about. Y que Dios los bendiga. And may God bless you. And that concludes uh, the Holy Father's meeting with the young people here outside of the Felix Varela Cultural Center uh, attached to the cathedral in Havana. Uh, the Pope obviously inspired there by um, 
the young people, their enthusiasm, and the young man, Leonardo, who he's speaking with now. Uh, this notion of dreaming, the dreams he had, and uh, the young man offered a very powerful speech. That was a beautiful speech by that young man, and he had the courage to say that we pray for the Holy Father to encourage us in the hope for a future full of profound changes for all Cubans think whatever they may think. And that precisely is, sums up the, the hope of so many people in that beautiful island and in the exile community that there won't be an ideology of a one-party state, that there'll be a free country where people can discuss, debate, and find their path together right. uh, with differences, political differences. What do we find normal in our country and in most of the Western world, that that will also find its role in Cuba. Yeah. Uh, before we unpack some of what the Pope said, I want to take us now to EWTN News' Susie Pinto. She's on location in Havana. Now, before the Pope arrived, Susie, at the Havana Cathedral, he made an unscheduled stop at a local parish. Tell us about that. Raymond, my colleagues at Catholic News Agency tell me that stop was at the Church of the Sacred Heart that's also known as La Iglesia de la Reina. That's a parish here in Havana run by Spanish Jesuits. I was able to spend some time there earlier this week with a group of elderly folks that receive help from that church. And it is a beautiful, vibrant parish that does a lot of social outreach in the community. And I spoke with a pastor and he was really hoping for a visit from the Pope. Of course, the Pope always tries to visit his fellow Jesuits when he's traveling and it, it, it happened. They were lucky enough to get that unscheduled visit from Pope Francis. Very good. Thank you so much, Thank Susie, you. for the report. We'll catch up with you as uh, the trip continues. And, and tell me, uh, fathers, or Robert, you wanted to say something about the Pope's address. Again, two improvised yeah. major events here, and he basically cast aside the prepared text. Well, that, and that first, uh, that, that first uh, discourse in, inside the cathedral to the religious was the heart of Bergoglio. I, yeah. I, I know yeah. a couple of cardinals who actually elected him, and the, the, more than one of them said to me, I was absolutely convinced that God was the that God wanted him to become Pope. And I think that that, I mean, that was really palpable in the way that he spoke to the religious. As simple as it was and as sort of folky as, as it was, you could see that they were just transfixed by it. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was also amazed by this discourse with the, the students because he seemed to have a kind of a strategy. And the word God did not come up in it until the very end there when he right. said, I know some of you can't, don't, are not believers, but he was able to deliver a very rich, hopeful, articulate vision of something that young people would like to, to see. He doesn't set them against one another. Um, I think it's unusual, because I think in the past we would have expected a pope to step out in front of them and say, young people, come to the Lord. Jesus is waiting for you. He didn't take that route. The route mm -hmm. that he took was, it's a longer and not easy, as he said, no. not easy path toward this dialogue, this encounter that you're going to have. But then but at the it end, was almost an encounter with each other. Yeah, with, you for, need to have an encounter initially, with initially with one, one another. another, and then walking together, maybe arriving at this yeah. th these other questions. He did make the he did say something. A social communion is to seek the common good, and a family is destroyed by enmity. A people is destroyed by enmity. A country mm -hmm. is destroyed by enmity. What did you hear there? Well, I. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, it was as clear as it could be. Uh, I think that uh, the Pope is, in a way, following the same itinerary that Gaudium et Spes follows, which begins with a discussion of our common humanity and ends up with Christ as the summit of our humanity. Mm -hmm. so, so he's following that path. It, as I was hearing him speak, you know, I was thinking uh, that's perhaps why he's, he's highlighting that the fact that, first of all, we need to... Um, we establish that bond that unites us mm -hmm. as human beings. And then together we will be able to walk hand in hand. And uh, as we seek truth, we will encounter the summit and the fullness of humanity, who is Christ himself. So, so very much a uh, Gaudimet Spes yeah. uh, itinerary, I would say. And a lot of Argentinian flair, I might, <laughs> I might know. He used some uh, regional... Uh, yeah, yeah. No, he said sometimes, I don't know if he used this to, word in, in, your, uh, yeah. Yeah. in your language. No, there were Arugar, great moments. You know, Arugar, this, this common good idea is, I, it also leapt out at me because 
I, I have spent a lot of my life studying Catholic social thought and, and how sure. it applies. And you have a new book coming out on just this theme, which we'll talk about. Well, the Catholic about. intellectual tradition. Well, yeah. it's all part yeah. of the parcel. But, you know, the common good is a notion that was developed, and we never know with this pope how much he's speaking technically and, or how much he's just, he's just being sort of colloquial. But the common good is an idea that is developed to avoid the extremes of both individualism and collectivism. Common good is not collectivism. It's, it's a kind of a richer idea where, where individuals, in, in a certain solidarity that preserves also their their liberties, it's it's a different um, kind of level of discourse that, that takes place rather than the liberalism and conservatism, the mm -hmm. the individualism and the collectivism that we're we're used to from the political order. Yeah. Father Jerry. Uh, the Pope used the word dream. He, t yeah. he took uh, that word up from Leonardo, that young man who spoke so brilliantly. And he talked about dreams and how it's necessary for a people. I remember a great line that I heard years ago from St. Jose Maria Scriva, dream and your dreams will fall short. Mm. And of course he was talking about spiritual progress and doing the work of God. And I think for the people of Cuba it's just the same thing. You c should never shut down your dreams, your hopes, your, your looking to the future with God uh, simply because of sufferings at the present moment. And in fact, uh, we always talk about the American dream and, you know, people come here to participate in it. Uh, the Pope is saying, develop a Cuban dream. And he says it shouldn't be a future of violence. It should be an encounter and discussion, mm -hmm. people with different ideas. Um, when, Cuban, when Cuban communism essentially crumbles, eventually crumbles, that kind of message needs to be taken up. Yeah, he said a young person who is not capable of dreaming is closed in on himself. You should seek, search for new horizons. Don't shrink as we say in Argentina, mm -hmm. don't shrink. And, uh, and then there was, of course, the, what we've heard many times, the Pope's prism, really, for looking at the world and the state we're in, the throwaway culture that discards children, young people, the elderly. And he always harkens back to the young people in unemployment, that that's somehow the, the way that culture disposes of the young. We'll see how that matures and the way he articulates that once he comes to American soil and uh, we'll take it from there. Now, that's a nice segue for where I'm taking everybody now. Before we let you go, here's a little message that the Pope released today, and it's in English, and it's a little welcome to the World Meeting with Families. Watch this. I look forward to greeting the pilgrims and the people of Philadelphia when I come for the World Meeting for Families. I will be there because you will be there. See you in Philadelphia. So there's the Holy Father saying he'll be in Philadelphia. We'll see you in Philadelphia. Uh, the English lessons, I think, are kind of starting to kick in a little bit. You, you can tell the unfamiliarity there a little bit with the language, but he's, he's making a valiant effort. And look, at 78, you can't, you can't fault him for doing that. We look forward to that. Let me uh, preview what awaits us tomorrow. And uh, we'll put this full screen up for you just so you can get a sense of what lies ahead. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, live coverage of the Pope's Mass from Olegen, Cuba. Olguin. Olguin. Olguin, Cuba. They write it out phonetically and I can never read it. Check EWTN.com for the schedule in your area. Uh, following that Mass, there'll be a blessing of the city at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and then a meeting with bishops. Uh, that'll happen at 6.30 p.m., and a prayer, that's going to be the prayer at the Shrine of Our Lady of Caridad, Lady of Charity. Uh, we hope you will join us for all of those events and much more as we await the Pope's departure from Cuba and arrival here in the United States, but much more ahead in this Cuban leg of the trip. Our comprehensive coverage of Pope Francis's journey continues on the EWTN Facebook page. And for the latest updates, you can follow me on Twitter at Raymond Arroyo. On behalf of Robert Royal, Father Gerald Murray, Father Roberto Cid, and the entire staff and crew of EWTN News, I'm Raymond Arroyo. We will see you tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, but check your local listings. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye now.